Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a first impressions and swatching of the set of Shuttle Art water-based gel crayons that I got. I popped these from, I got these from Amazon. I will have the links down below. Um, you guys, if you've watched me for a little bit, will know I really enjoy using gel crayons for backgrounds. And because of that fact, I have lately been kind of collecting and playing with different brands to find you know which ones I like and uh, just shoving them all into a box and using them all really. I like to use mine dry with a craft brush um, so something like um, either the craft brushes or the makeup versions a lot of people really like these because they're a bit denser um, both also available on Amazon I put those down below as well um, I found these to be the best way to blend them out for a smooth finish when you're using them dry um, and I just pop them onto uh, like a corrugated small chopping board you know the rough texture ones because it picks up the crayon and then I pick it up onto my brush and smear that onto my page and find that I get quite a nice smooth um, textured blend that way if you want more of a stippled look then the um, kind of the stipple brushes are better so you can it depends what you prefer this one comes in this really cute looking lunchbox case um it's a 48 color set and it opens out to look like this i'm going to swatch the colors out for you because i know people like to see them you get this little brush just here this shuttle art brush that i'll be honest unless you're going to use them like a watercolor wet isn't any use for me in this uh, particular instance it's a nylon brush I'd say um, but yeah I really like the gel crayons I've not really found a brand that I dislike obviously certain brands they're more pigmented they're more expensive and they'll keep their color better but if you just want them for your you know your backgrounds on coloring pages in coloring books then um, these versions have all worked pretty well for me and I find most of the it's one of those kind of white label things a lot of the cheaper versions tend to be you know this this same shape same capsule um if I can get the lid off um design with the twist lid and they're all pretty similar to each other i just saw this set and thought it was quite a good price for the amount of colors that you get 48 is quite quite a big set i am slowly collecting i say slowly because i've only got two packs i do really like the ranger distress crayons but let's be honest i mean a pack of six of those is about 15 quid so that's something i only get something you know kind of every so often whereas this has allowed me to build up a, a collection that I can just use really quickly while um, wanting to build up like maybe a better brand in the background uh, and they do last quite well I've not gone through a crayon yet but then I do have quite a few so I'm going to pop those to one side and we will swatch and play see what we've got i've got my white piece of paper here i am going to zoom in for you guys and then i'm going to try and remember to move my paper around because we know what i'm like for that uh, so obviously as always we start with a white I'm not going to swatch a white out don't think there's any point to that but it's there so that you can um, lighten up your other colours or use it on a darker background for smoke we've got what looks to be I'm going to go with that being quite a neon yellow yep wow you can't see that on camera but that's just a like a highlighter yellow and bear with me these lids are on really well which is good uh, a truer more sunflower yellow there now, I don't know what my dog's barking at somebody must be at the door and I'd say we've got this darker peach some of these aren't quite as dark a colour as they look and more of a paler beige and they definitely don't match their their barrels but you don't really expect uh, a budget crayon to anyway they're probably not going to be quite as pigmented as they look kind of in their crayon form when you blend them out got this nice darker yellow very similar to the other one to be honest 
and then what I would call a a mustard which is very nice it's not normally a colour that you're easily going to get and then we move into some orange tones here very appropriate for the Halloween season oh a really nice dark orange quite a vibrant colour I think this is definitely going to be another neon I think this is the first set I've had neon crayons in. That is more neon than it looks on camera. So they must obviously be the extra colours added into this set to my others. One very pale pink. More of a bubblegum pink. These are maybe not quite as smooth as my... I've got Silky Gel crayons from, is it TBC? The, um, it's the craft... I can't remember what... I'm sure it's the initials TBC is the brand. And they have been one of my favourite cheaper sets so far. They're not quite as big a set as this, I don't think. I think they come in a 36. But they are a very smooth set. Got some red now. Nice true rich red there. That top one's more of an orangey red. More of a, a burgundy. That's a nice one. I don't think I have that colour so far. And then... <laughs> At least you know your lids won't fall off. A bit of purple. Do you like the different tones they have? Pale blue. I've got another purple. Nice dark one. Back to the blue again. I'm gonna, I think we'll start back up again at the top. <laughs> Bear with me. I will try these out in a moment as well to see how they blend. I think that would be nice. Oh, that's more green than it looked in the tube. I thought that was gonna be a blue. We're into the third row. Nearly there, guys. <laughs> As always, disclaimer, that is, this is not a review. I've not had them very long. I've not used them very much. So it is just a swatching and first impressions.
more of a forest green that one quite nice got some browns which is always nice chocolate brown and a terracotta to be a gold and then we have an actual metallic gold one's got a bit of shimmer in it and a grey oh no that's a silver I don't think that's actually got yep yeah, it's got shimmer in that as well a little bit of glitter on the end there and a black oh that looks quite impressive solid wonder how that blends out and then we've got a couple of greys left that is a shimmery grey again that is a um, has that got some shimmer to it? No, that is a that is a smooth colour. That's a grey, and then I've got this very pale grey left. Very nice. So that we'll zoom you guys back out so you can see them. Um, that is the colours you've got quite a nice vibrant array of colours there plenty of green a few blues um nice selection of purples do quite like some of the paler colours if you just wanted a, a hint of a background to your page without a lot of colour i do quite like the greys um i like that a couple of these are indeed shimmery uh, which is nice that's more unusual for a set um this one this one these two here have um got some shimmer to them so that is the swatch i'm going to quickly pause you grab the stuff i need and we'll have a little play just to see what they're like okay so i have i um, got the bits and pieces I need to have a little play. We'll pick a couple of colours and we'll see what they're like. I'm going to pick a really pale uh, greeny blue and then we're going to pick a dark purple. Um, purple's normally the tricky colours so I'll have a go with those. Uh, like I said I've just got a chopping board here with a rough surface and I just paint my crayon on. You don't really ever use a whole lot. Crayon, to be honest. Excuse my messy board. <laughs> Needs a wash. Um, this is also just a cheap cutting board from Amazon. So I've got my crayons just messily painted onto there. Um, what is best rub it onto your brush tap it off a little bit you can pick it back up again uh, you just don't want to put an initial splodge of colour into your page that you can't then kind of rub out afterwards so that you just stuck with that little dark patch where your brush went down and you won't get that if you just get rid of the excess first you get this nice smooth very pale colour you can build these up with a couple of layers obviously that is a really pale color that i've used there you probably can't even see that but it is there and it is actually quite nice um so that you can see something we'll try our dark purple again i'm just gonna tap that off and we're gonna blend that dark purple into that really pale blue just let it fade out 
probably put an initial layer down. I should have tapped that off a little bit more. Do you see what I mean about that? That initial piece that you can't then get rid of. All you can then really do is fix it by darkening around it and fading it out. So to avoid that, we will do that again. We will tap my brush off properly and we will start gentler. Can you see the difference? Um, that you'll get by just not going in too heavy straight away you'll get this sort of effect over this so it depends what you want if you want deep depth you know you, you can do that but if you just very gently lay that colour down after tapping enough of it off you'll not get that initial kind of splodge on the page that you can't get rid of can you see this here um, and you'll just not get that. So you can see you can get plenty of colour from the darker colours and your paler colours are going to be quite subtle. I have actually got a video um, of me um, doing a background in the this actual brand. Um, I will link it down below. I did the How Small Is Too Small video and I did a page from my very tiny um, miniature Enchanted Forest by Joanna Basford. It's the first page I've done in this book and I actually really enjoyed it. And for the background, I laid down all black and greys from this exact set. And um, they did work quite nicely. It does look quite pretty. And it does indeed have one of the um, shimmery greys on it. I don't think you can see it in this light, but in person where I've put the shimmer just here and here, um, it is actually quite a pretty sheen. And uh, yeah, so I'll put that video down below if you want to see them actually used on the page. Um, the second half of that video is me doing the background. And uh, yeah, so far I'm quite pleased. Obviously, they were a good price. They come in um, <laughs> this really fun case to be honest um, now I keep all mine together in a drawer and it's actually almost a shame to remove them from the case I think I've been resisting it a little bit they're going to have to go in my drawer because I forget to use stuff if it's not all together and it just doesn't bother me to mix brands um, whereas I think if I just leave them on my shelf like this I'll probably forget they're there <laughs> But um, I do think that's very fun. Very easy to just open right out and pop to one side to select your colours. And it all just folds straight back up. And it's got these nice little uh, lunchbox clips on the top. Little handle. Very cute. Very lunchbox-esque. And um, yeah, I can't say I'm, you know, displeased. Like I say, I have a few brands of these now. At this point, I'm just collecting. Uh, desperately got my eye on some King Arts but they were harder to get in my country than in America um, so I haven't tried those ones yet but from the ones I've tried they're all pretty similar obviously you've got your gelatos and your discreet stress crayons if you're looking for something that's going to last and going to keep its pigment and going to be more vibrant for longer but if you just want if you're like me and you're just still in those kind of um, practicing sort of stages where you're just learning to improve i found these to be quite nice to work with i cannot speak for the way that they work as water colors you know if you're actually applying them wet because it's just not the way i use them i found i'm not actually a massive water medium fan i've been branching out into the metallics for like fine details but when it comes to a background i just i don't like the mess i don't like my, the way that my paper reacts to it so i have been enjoying having this version that's still kind of messy you've got a lot of clean up afterwards still i'm not gonna lie but it's just not you know it's not as wet you don't have to leave your page for very long um, and what i have found which is very nice um, with most of the gel crayons um, you'll notice that the piece of paper i've got in here to protect is actually clean and that there's not really much coming off it does a little bit it will do um, and obviously doing that it will smudge it a little bit because i haven't kind of rubbed them right in i haven't fixed them in any way 
um, but they're just not particularly messy. They dry within, you know, um, probably like 10 minutes, to enough to the point to close your book. And they're pretty clean, like you can see there's no warp into my edges. The only thing that's happened is I got a little bit on here and this was me, not the crayons. It came from my, you know, the pages you pop underneath. I moved it by accident and then I got it on the other page. So you'll see even like the edge of my page looks pretty clean. It's not warped, it's not um, bled or run. And I've used black and grey and they have not come through. Now this is nice paper in the Joanna Basford, but with them being dry, there's no real reason for them to go through your page really so they do work very nicely and I'm sure you guys if you've watched me have seen that quite a lot of my backgrounds are done in gel crayon especially seen as without gel crayon I tend to not do a background at all Um, do love this little book now that I've started in it and realised I can get the details in that I want to um, I think it'll be quite fun to work in. So yeah, that is my set of Shuttle Art gel crayons. Just a first impression. I like them so far. Um, I do like them dry. I like them with my brushes. I don't really mind the craft brushes over the makeup brushes. Um, that's kind of for you to decide for yourselves. Um, I, like anything, I would suggest don't chuck them into your colouring box. Get yourself a scrap of paper. It only takes a minute. Have a little play. Have a practice. Like anything else you try, there's a learning curve um, to just getting that little skill down. And it's always a shame to work that learning curve out on the colouring page that you've just spent ages and ages and ages working on. Because that's the real disappointment with the background, isn't it? That you trash it and... <laughs> you are gutted because you spent all that time doing your page to then lay your background down. Right, as always guys, if you've got questions, pop them in the comments below. Uh, I always reply to everything. Happy to hear from you. Please give it a thumbs up if you like the swatching and first impression video so I know whether to continue. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it and I will see you soon.